This is your host, the Apostle Reuben, with another short Bible lesson. Speaking a few words, brothers and sisters, we have to watch out for who creates religion. You know, if any religion came out of Edom, and we, the true children of Israel, are listening to it, well, well. Now, I want to deal with this. What does it mean to be under? I want y'all to pay attention to that. That's the operative word, under the law. Let's read it. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. So what the Christians are doing is they're saying you are not under the law of Moses, the whole law. We're not under that law. We're not under the whole law. We're not under the law. But does that, I'm telling you, does under the law means all of it, including the Ten Commandments? Let me put it that way. Let's read what under the law means. And I'm going to show you why your preachers don't want this out there. Pay attention. Let's get the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, Levitical priesthood, for under it the people receive the law, the law of what? Animal sacrifice. That is the law they were under. Who was under? Israel was under, not all nations. All nations were not under the Levitical priesthood. They weren't. Hebrews 7, verse 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not have been called after the order of Aaron because the Levitical priesthood come from Aaron. Aaron was a Levite and his sons done the priesthood. But notice the word under because that's the law they were under. You don't see the Ten Commandments in this verse. All right, let's go back. Now, we're in Hebrews chapter 9, and we're going to read verse 15. We're getting to the point because i got a lot to cover. For this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. This is talking about the Messiah Christ. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. Wait a minute. Under the First Testament. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What testament were they under once again? Verse 13. For if the blood of bulls and of goats, the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify it to the purifying of the flesh. Pay attention. This is the old work of the priesthood. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God to purge your conscience. Your conscience is your mind from dead works. The dead works of the priesthood. Those, let me, let me, let me, let me show you. And as I say, brothers and sisters, we, we don't, we don't know if these Christians understand, but when you get Matthew chapter 27, Matthew chapter 27, verse 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks went. When it says the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom, that was the end of the priesthood. That was the end. There was no more priesthood after that. But they continued sacrificing for sin because they didn't believe in Christ. Well, many of them didn't. So they continued to sacrifice. And there's no, see, we're going to show you. Now, Christ ended it. But we go to Acts chapter 6 and verse 13 and set up false witnesses which said, this man ceases not to speak blasphemous words against the holy place. That's the temple and the law, which is sacrifice. They were still doing it. 
But at the cross, Christ ended that law of the temple. So when we go back to Hebrews 9, verse 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God to purge, which is cleanse your conscience, which is your mind from dead works. Those dead works were the temple, bruh. They meant nothing anymore. Christ had come and gone to serve the living God. Ah, now watch verse 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. They which are called who were under the first testament might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Not all nations. This is why they skip these verses. Keep wondering why they skip them. But I want you to notice the word under the first testament. What was Paul writing about? What is the context? Hebrews 9 and 1. Then verily the first covenant, which is testament, had also divine, excuse me, also, excuse me, had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary, the temple, sacrifice. That's the law they were under. The Ten Commandments had nothing to do with this. To be under the law was to be under the priesthood. The Bible's telling you what law they were under. It's not all the law, priesthood. That's why it says this, Hebrews, let's see, yeah, here it is, Hebrews 10, 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy by stoning under two or three witnesses, which is under that law. The only ones that were under the law was Israel. They were the only ones under the priesthood. This is what they're not telling you about it. Oh, they're trying to make you think being under the law was under all the law. No. So we go to Galatians. I love this. Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. Before faith came, we were kept under the law shut up unto faith that should afterwards be revealed. Who did you read was under the law? Who did you read? Israel. All nations were under the law. So these Galatians are Judeans in Galatia. These letters are not to everybody in any nation. It is not. They were under the law, shut up unto faith. Wherefore the law was our, our is Israel's schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Hmm. What law was the schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ? The temple. I want you to pay attention. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. That schoolmaster was the temple. It wasn't all the law. That's why Paul said this. See, the Christians, man, brothers, sisters, these Christians. Let's get the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ the Messiah has made me free from the law of sin and death. There's two laws in this verse. There's two laws in this verse. There was a law of the spirit of life in Christ and the law of sin and death. What? was that law? The temple. The Bible keeps pointing to what it is. This law of the spirit of life in Christ would be what? Spirit of life in Christ. The book of Mark. The book of Mark 10, 17. When, we, when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Ah, life. See, that's the life that's in Christ. Watch Christ. Verse 19, skipping. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness to fraud. Not honor thy father and thy mother. Ah, so that spirit of life that's in Christ eternally is in the Ten Commandments, not the temple.
Come on now. 